Happy Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day, a great day, one of the greatest days of the year where we get to celebrate our moms and these people that influence our lives in so many great ways. I know that I've been influenced greatly by my mother. She might be here right now. She might not. You, you don't know, but I have been influenced greatly by her, and I'm very thankful for her and for my wife and helping me raise our kids. There's just so much to be thankful for on Mother's Day, and so I hope that you're excited to be at church. I was going to say in church, but you're excited to be at church because that's where we're at right now. We are at church, and we are ready to have church. We are in week four of our series, What to Do in a Crisis, and you say, what does this have anything to do with Mother's Day? Don't worry, we'll get there, but before we do, like every week, you know the rules around here. We have to let you know where we've been so we can figure out where, we've, where we want to go. And so in week one, if you haven't watched or you haven't listened, make sure that you do. In week one, we learned not to drift, to hold on to truth, that God is sovereign over the storms of life, that no matter what we're going through, he's in control. So we need to just hold on, don't drift. In week two, we learned not to discard what's important, not to throw away the things that are important to us or the things that we've built up. Our responsibility in the storms of life is to trust God openly. And when we do that, we can show other people that and in turn strengthen ourselves and strengthen other people. Last week, we learned not to despair. Don't fret, don't stress, don't have anxiety about what's coming. Trust that God is in control because of these other things that we've learned. Now today, we're, before we jump into number four, you have to understand we did this series a little bit differently in that we could have started the series with what we're going to talk about today. But I think it's important to understand and to kind of end this series with this point because a lot of times what we do in life is there's usually this one step that if we followed it and we actually did it, all the other stuff wouldn't have happened. But a lot of times we miss out on that first step. And because we miss out on it, now all of a sudden we have all these other things that we have to deal with. And so we, before I give you this number four, you need to understand that we find ourselves going through the other three steps that we've learned about. We find ourselves drifting. We find ourselves letting go of the things that are important. We find ourselves in a place of despair because we miss this fourth and final step. And it's simply this. Don't disregard sound advice. Don't disregard sound advice. Disregard literally means pay no attention to ignore something. And a lot of times, like, like what I'm saying, you know it because we've all been there, right? Someone will tell us something and we say, well, they don't know what they're talking about. I want to figure it out for myself. And then what happens is we start this downward, downward spiral where trouble comes and we, we think, how did I get here? How, how, did, how, did I, how did I drift to this point? How did I let go of the things that I held so close to me? How, why am I in such despair right now? Well, it's because we disregarded sound advice in the first place. Usually there's someone there to speak hope and to speak life and truth into our lives. Usually it's God, the Holy Spirit, His Word. It could be someone that you love, someone that you care about, someone that you respect. But oftentimes what we do is we disregard that sound advice and it creates this snowball effect where all these other things come into play. Now, this is where it relates to Mother's Day because we all know who gives the best advice. Mothers give the best advice. And I could tell you story after story after story of times where I went to my mother with a question she gave me an answer, I ignored it, and had to go back and kind of pick up the pieces. I can tell you other stories of when I went to her and I listened, and she was right. Most of the time she was right. The only thing she wasn't right about was she told me if I keep biting my nails, I would never find a wife, and she was wrong about that. That was it, though. The, oh, that's the only thing she's ever been wrong about in her entire life. Also, in college, when I started losing my hair, she was like, it's probably just stress. She was wrong about that, too. But <laughs> other than that, other than that, she's, she's right, because mothers know best. And I could tell you story after story about my mom. But 
Last week, I heard a story, and I thought it fit perfectly with this. I don't know if any of you have been watching The Last Dance, this Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls documentary. And uh, all it's done, really, for me is just affirm what I already know. There's two absolute truths in life that I know. And one is that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And two is that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player who ever walked the face of the earth. Those are the two things I hold true to me and I know to be fact, factual things. So you can hold truth to that too. But I don't know if you've been watching Last Dance documentary. I know a lot of people have. If you're not really into sports, maybe you haven't. So I don't want to spoil anything for you. Or if you watched last week, you probably already heard this, but just bear with me. Last week, I'm watching The Last Dance, and they talk about Michael Jordan's rookie season and how he's getting ready to come into the league, and he needs, he's trying to sign a shoe deal. And Converse at the time was the shoe, right? Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, all the stars wore Converse. Cons, man. They interview Michael Jordan in the documentary. They say, well, who did you want to sign with? And he says in the camera, Adidas, whoever, the, the president of Adidas was probably at home, like burning his house down. Michael Jordan said, I wanted to sign with Adidas. I liked their shoe. I wore it in college. I liked it. It was comfortable. I, I wanted to sign with Adidas, but they didn't want me. And this little known startup running shoe company called Nike called him up and asked if he would come to Oregon to meet with him. And he didn't want to. And immediately in the documentary, they go to his mom. And his mom said, I told him, we raised him with respect and to honor people. And if they want an interview, you're going to at least go and listen. <laughs> Michael Jordan's mom started Nike, okay? <laughs> I'm watching it, and I'm sitting there, and I'm going, I'm preaching about this next week. This is perfect. This is amazing. Michael Jordan, in his entire NBA career, made $93 million in salary from playing NBA basketball. Michael Jordan today makes $130 million a year from Nike. His mom knew best. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that he's really, really, really happy that he listened to his mother. Yeah. We can't disregard sound advice, and sometimes our moms are the ones who give that to us. Proverbs 1 8, it says, My son, Hear the instruction of your father. Don't worry, dads, we didn't leave you out. And do not reject the teaching of your mother. We need to be people that trust the opinions of those older than us, wiser than us, and those who truly care about us and our best interest. Now we got to move into Acts 27, because that's where we've been, and that's where we're going to finish up. Acts 27, verse 9 and 10, it says, Paul began to strongly warn them, saying, men, I sense after careful thought and observation that this voyage will certainly be a disaster and with great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. Paul is warning them that this is not going to end well. And we know from the past weeks that we've been talking about this that it doesn't end well. But Paul is trying his best to give them sound advice. He's trying his best to let them know, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't listen, and they end up shipwrecked. Why? Because of impatience. He says, let's just, let's just hang here for a little bit. And they say, no, no, we know best. We don't, we don't want to be here. We want to be there, and so we can't wait. We're going, we're going, we're going, and a lot of times that's what we do in life. The truth is, when we allow ourselves to become impatient, we usually don't take the time to check things out with God. We end up sailing right into awaiting storms. Bad relationships, bad financial decisions, bad choices in life. Why? Because we rush them. We think to ourselves, this, this, this is what I wanted. This is what I want. I, I got to go get it. I got to go get it. And a lot of times God's trying to tell us, you need to chill for a minute. You need to take a look at everything that's out there. You need to talk to me. You need to talk to some other people and figure this out in a process, in some steps, in listen to the people who are telling you these things. Sometimes when God says no, he doesn't mean never. He's simply saying not now. 
And what he has in store for you is worth the wait. I, I was having a very theological discussion with my son the other day. He's seven, and he was asking me, he looked at me, we we're sitting outside, and he looked at me, and he was like, who's that guy, who's the angel that, Jesus, that God cast out again? And I was like, Lucifer? And he was like, hmm. And I was like, Satan? He's like, yeah, that's it. And I was like, okay. And he was like, so like he's in hell and like in, in heaven. And so we're having this big discussion about heaven and hell. And he asked the sister, like, Harper, you want to come to heaven with us? Like, you'll be able to talk to the dogs and stuff. It's going to be really cool. She's like, mm, I don't know. And we we're like, oh, Jesus, you know. And, and, and so we're having this discussion. And, and it was amazing because I say this all the time, but it really is true. My kids teach me so much about faith and about just relationship with Jesus and and I'm talking to him, and, and in only a way that kids could, you know, they're like, I can't wait to get to heaven. I'm going to wish for this. And I'm going to wish for this. And I was like, well, it doesn't really work like that. Like, they're not wishes. You know, it's not that kind of thing. This isn't Aladdin, you know. And, and uh, you know, so I'm like, you know, we just, when we get there, we'll have, you know, we'll be like superheroes. We'll be able to fly. and we'll be able to, We don't have to ask. We'll just be able to do it, you know. And he's like, oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And so we're talking about it. And and he was like, well, you know, it's cool that we can still, like, wish for stuff, not wish, like, we can ask for stuff, like, here. And I was like, yeah, like, that's what prayer is. And I was like, that's when we, you know, we ask and we talk to Jesus, and, and Jesus talks to God, and we, we get to ask him for stuff, and it's really cool. And he was like, yeah, and sometimes Jesus says yes, and sometimes he says no, but that's okay. And I was like, you know what, that is okay. I would much rather have someone answer me than just ghost me and leave me on read. Like, like when I text you, if I see that you read it, even if you're going to say no, at least just respond. That's all, that's all that I'm asking for. Just, just write something back. And I'm thankful that we serve a God that sometimes we get a little bit impatient. And sometimes we, we want to disregard sound advice and we want to move forward. But when we take a step back and we just ask, hey, God, what should I do in this circumstance? God, bring people into my life that will help me figure this out. When we do that, God will answer us. Sometimes it might not be the answer that we want. Sometimes it's go. Sometimes it's stay. Sometimes it's no. But at least he answers us. At least we pray to a God that hears us and cares enough to respond to our requests. And so we need to understand this when we're, when we're working through these problems. Psalm, Psalm 37 says, wait for and expect the Lord and keep his way. And he will exalt you to inherit the land. In the end, when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. It says, wait for and expect the Lord and keep his ways. Listen, I know some of you right now, you're going through a hard time. You're like, I've been waiting. I, I need God to do something. Keep waiting and expect God to do something. He will, I promise you. But you got to hold fast to it and you got to trust that he will. So, don't discard sound advice. Today, what I really want to talk to you about is how to avoid a shipwreck. How do we, how do we make sure that, that we don't disregard sound advice? What are the things that I need to look for? What are some tips to help me to understand? I, I don't want to have to go through those other three things that we talked about. So in order to do that, I got to figure out how to listen to the people around me and how to do that properly. And so obviously listening to mom is number one, but we're going to talk about a few other ones here. Number one, don't take advice from the wrong people, even so-called experts. What is an expert? I, I was thinking about this last night. Like, did you just read one more book than the other guy? I don't understand. Like, I, no, no disrespect to anybody, but I'm watching, like, watching the news and stuff. It's like the foremost expert on infectious disease. Does that mean he had every infectious disease? I'm confused. Why, why is someone, I don't, I don't get, on ESPN they have senior writers. What is that? I don't even know what that means, right? But we have these titles that we give people sometimes. Oh, they're an expert. They're an expert. They're an expert. I, I don't, I don't, I'm confused by it. So if someone wants to explain it to me, please do. But a lot of times what we do is we think because someone has that title in front of their name that they know everything and that they, are, that they're the end all be all. We have to understand we can think for ourselves sometimes. We learned two weeks ago, common sense is something that God gave us, wisdom. And so sometimes we need to understand 
who am I taking advice from? Am I taking advice from the wrong people, even people who say they know what they're talking about? Acts 27, it says, The centurion, Julius, ranking officer on board, listened and was persuaded by the captain and the owner of the ship rather than by what Paul said. Listen, the captain and the owner of the ship were both experts, but they couldn't hear from the voice of God like Paul could. And this centurion says, okay, you know, the, the, he's the captain of the ship. He's got to know what he's talking about. He, he's an expert. He, he's the owner of the ship. He, he's been on the seas. He knows what he's on. Paul's like, dude, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You can't. He says, no, no, no. They're experts. I'm, I'm going to listen to the experts. Listen, we got to be discerning about who we allow to speak into our lives. Just because someone's successful in a secular field doesn't mean they're qualified to give you spiritual guidance. We have to find people around us, find spiritual leaders who will lead us in the way that we need to go, that will see maybe in front of where we can see. There are people who've spoken to my life time and time again, and they could see, it was like they could see where I was headed, but I couldn't see it. And we've all been there. When, when we're in something and we're trying to move forward, all we can see is what we want. The people who are closest to us and the people who are close to God that we can go to and talk to, they, they can kind of see where we're heading before we can. We need to be open to that and be willing to seek out those people. And listen, I appreciate experts, and I think you should listen to whoever, and I, I, I'm not trying to say don't listen to anybody. But I think we need to find some people in our lives who are in a relationship with God, they're close enough to God and close enough to us that we can go to them and say, listen, I need some help. I need some advice on this. First Thessalonians 5, it says, appreciate those who diligently work among you. Recognize, acknowledge, and respect your leaders who are in charge over you in the Lord and who give you instruction. And we ask that you appreciate them and hold them in highest esteem, in love, because of their work on your behalf need to get some people around you that you can look to as spiritual leaders in your life. I hope that it's someone, maybe someone here, a pastor here. I know my dad's obviously my pastor, but he's also my dad, and so I've had the privilege of being able to go to him with questions. So if you enjoyed the question and answers on Thursdays, it's incredible. I just finished all 786 pages of notes uh, yesterday. I was started Thursday night. Uh, I haven't slept in three days, but I'm an expert now, so it works out good. No, have you enjoyed the, I hope that you've enjoyed the question and answer. I, I, he's really mad because it was my idea, you know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but it was my idea, and he's very angry with me, uh, so you need to pray for my safety, uh, but, but they've been incredible, and I hope that you appreciate those and things like that because you can look at that and say, you know what, if I had a question, I can go to someone who's a spiritual leader to me and I can listen to their answers, not just their answers from their own mind, but from God's word and from experience. And all of a sudden, you open your mind up to so much more when you kind of take off the blinders that we put on sometimes and we say, no, this way is right, or this way is right, or this is how I was raised. And all of a sudden, you start to listen to the opinions of others, and you take people who are in spiritual leadership, and you say, man, they have experience, they have wisdom, they have knowledge, but they also have the insight from God to be able to answer these questions. Maybe I should open my mind to some of this stuff. Maybe I should look a little bit deeper. And when we start to do that, all of a sudden, we learn to start taking advice from the right people. Ultimately, the, the greatest tool that we have for this is God's Word. I've said it a million times. You can literally find something in there about any situation that you're going through, literally anything. You could, you're having a hard day of do whatever, your problem. Google it. Verses on and Google it. You'll find something because that's what God's Word is. It's a, it's a guidebook. It's a tool. It's a key for us. And so that's the ultimate thing. You say, I, I, don't, I need guidance. I need wisdom. Look to God's Word. Don't just pick and choose what you want from it. Look at the whole thing. Look it in context. See what God is trying to tell you. And I promise you that it will start to change the way you think about some things. The second thing 
that we need to avoid a shipwreck is remember that sometimes the majority gets it wrong. Sometimes, just sometimes, I'm not saying every time, relax, because I know there's some people out there that you just want to disagree with everyone just to disagree with everyone. But sometimes the majority gets it wrong. Acts 27 verse 12 says, because the harbor was not well situated for wintering, the majority of the sailors decided to put to sea from there. The majority of the sailors on board said, you know what, let's do it. But they were wrong. Listen, Moses, as he's leading the people to the promised land, what are they doing? They're grumbling. We want to go back to Egypt. Moses, this stinks. We've been in the wilderness, the desert. We, got, we want to go back and be slaves. Are you kidding me? The majority, thank God that Moses didn't listen to the majority. Right? Moses said, we, we can't. We have a task. And we know that there was punishment for those that thought like that. We need to understand that sometimes the majority, this herd mentality, it's not always right. I read this this week. And I liked it. It says the most expensive thing you can do is pay attention to the wrong people. It costs you something when you pay attention to the wrong people. Listen, there's a lot of places you can go nowadays and pay attention to the wrong people. There's, I, I'm not going to lie to you. You hit a certain, you, hear, you hit a breaking point sometimes, right? You try to be Christ-like, you try to follow after him, you try to be the best you can be, and we've been in this quarantine for I don't know how many weeks, and the, over the last about three or four days, i just been kind of losing my mind a little bit. Like on social media and stuff, you see people and you're like, are they stupid? What an idiot? You know, you, you just start, you start to lose it after a while. You hit a breaking point. And I came home the other day and I was like, I said to my wife, I was like, I'm about to go comment on everyone's thing because I'm just in the mood. And she's like, no, don't, don't. Again, wisdom, wisdom from, you know, mother, from wisdom. I was like, I, I was like, I got to. I was like, I can't take it. There's so many stupid people and these, these opinions and this and they're putting these articles out. I was like, I was about to lose my mind. And so I did on a couple. And then I had to take a deep breath and I say, God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm wasting my time on things that don't matter, on things, on people, on news stories, on news outlets, on this story, that story, that I'm paying attention to the wrong people. Help me to focus on you. Help me to focus on what you want to show me. Psalm 25, it says, he guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. When we just trust in him, God will begin to guide us in the right way, and he'll teach us his way, which is always the best way. It's the way, as Christians, we should be striving for. I want to do what God is telling me to do. And I got to realize that sometimes the majority is not always right. The third and the final thing that we need to understand is you can't afford to be guided by circumstances alone. A lot of times we allow our circumstances to dictate uh, who we are and where we're going. In, on the, in the reverse, we need to be people that say, I'm going to dictate my circumstances. M- maybe, maybe I'm not in the best place right now, but you know what? With God's help, I can think positively. I can spin this around. I can get out of this. God's going to help me. And when we start to do that, all of a sudden we don't let our circumstances kind of take control of us. Uh, at verse 13, it says, so when the south wind blew softly, thinking that they had obtained their goal, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete, hugging the coast. Listen, it's foolish to ignore what God is trying to tell us just because things look good. We allow ourselves to do this all the time. Well, you know, he's, he's been coming to church with me, so we've, we started, we've started to date. Or, you know, you know we're, we're, we're moving, but, but, you know, we haven't found a church yet, but, you know, we really, we're going we're gonna to move and we're going to, or, or you, know, you know, I'm going to go out on this financial, you know, investment, but I haven't really talked to anybody about it. I just, it's my gut, you know, I'm going with my gut. And, and you start making a little bit of money and then all of a sudden, why? Because when things look good, we pursue them and we push forward. But sometimes we have to realize that God's, hasn't even communicated with us yet. We haven't talked to him about it. We haven't uh, looked, looked for advice on the matter. Listen, feelings can lie. And if God says, wait in the harbor, 
you'd better do it because the devil can arrange undesirable circumstances if you put out to sea. We need to understand. Listen, what did it say? When the, wind, when the south wind blew softly, thinking that they had obtained their goal. They set out and that wind blew and they went, this is it. I'm not a sailor, but I'm sure the, the sail poofed out and they went. I don't know if that's a nautical term, poofed. But the sailor, the sail, you know, went out and they're, oh, it's nice calm seas and we got this perfect wind and this is it. We're going to press on. And then all of a sudden they hit this huge storm. And so many of us, we do the same thing. We don't talk to God. We ignore sound advice. And then all of a sudden, like we learned over the last three weeks, this storm overcomes our lives. And we look back going, man, if I had just listened back there and I hadn't let my circumstances dictate what I'm going to do, I wouldn't... I wouldn't be drifting. I wouldn't be in despair. I wouldn't be letting go of everything that was important to me if I had just listened. We can't allow the circumstances of life to dictate who we are. We have to let God do it. And he will if we ask him to. But we got to trust that he's in control of it. When it comes to important decisions in your life, did you know that you can pray scripture? It's okay. Some people say, I don't know how to pray. I don't know. You can pray scripture. It works, I promise you. These two verses are, are verses that I think if you hold them dear to your heart and you say, man, the next time I wanna, I'm going to make decisions, I, I'm going to pray these scriptures. Psalm 25, it says, guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior and my hope is in you all day long. We, we use this term a lot, right, like all day long, like, oh, it was nice out all day long, or oh, he was, we use it in sports all the time, like, man, he was sh- shooting the lights out all day long. We, we use this term all day, I love this in this verse, because he's not just the God of the morning, or the afternoon, or the night, or while I sleep, you know, now I lay, my, lay me down to rest, all day long, God's our hope. He's sufficient for us. He gets us through what we need to get through, because he's our hope. He's, he's the one that can bring the truth and teach us how to make decisions, how to go about doing things in life, and how to understand when sound advice is being given. Psalm 143, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. That's where I was this week. I was, I, I was, was kind of all over the place, and I needed God to bring me back to a place of level ground. I think as Christians, we need to understand that we need to be level ground people. We don't need to freak out. We don't need to be in in despair all the time and, oh, woe is me. We don't need to have crazy anxiety. Wow, what's going to happen? We need to be people who are on level ground. That when people ask us something, we're able to communicate with them what God is trying to tell us. People say, why aren't you freaking out? Why is it this? Why aren't you depressed? Why aren't you? How are you going to do this? say, I'm figuring it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the people that are close to me, ones that love me and I love them, and they, we love Jesus, and we're going to talk, and we're going to pray, and I'm going to look to God's word. I'm going to remember that the majority doesn't always get it right. I'm going to remember that sometimes so-called experts don't know what they're talking about because they don't hear from the voice of God like I can hear from the voice of God. And when I do these things, all of a sudden, I can start to listen to sound advice, and instead of disregarding it and then falling into despair and drifting and letting go of the things that are important, when the advice is given, I can grab hold of it, and I can say, this is from God. God is trying to show me something, and when I do that, all of a sudden, those other three weeks, those other three things, I don't even have to worry about them anymore. Why? Because I've I've held on to the truth that God has for me, and I've held on to what God wants to do in my life. And whether that's your mother giving you that advice, I pray that, like me, you are blessed with a mother who can, who can give you that advice. But whether that's your mother giving you that advice, your father, a loved one, a friend, a co-worker, a spiritual leader, the Bible, or God himself through his Holy Spirit, I hope and I pray that you will cling to it, hold on to it, and trust that he is in control even in our storms, and he's able to get us out if we'll just listen to sound advice, take hold, and trust it. In Jesus' name, let's pray. God, I pray today for 
each and every person who is listening, who's watching. I pray that you would move in their hearts and in their lives. I pray that you would, I pray that you would do uh, a work in their hearts. God, we know that there are people right now who, who are, are, are need, they need hope. They need peace. They need strength in their, in their lives. And so I pray that you would be that source, that they wouldn't look to the news, they wouldn't look to, to social media, they wouldn't look to secular friends, God, but they would look to your word, they would pray, they would seek after your face, and that as they do that, they would find that you'd put people in their path who can be spiritual leaders and who can give them guidance as they go through this life. We know it's not easy, but you've promised to be there with us, and so we thank you for that today, God. I pray for those who are on any step of this journey that we've been talking about. But I pray that you would help us to be people like Paul, people that will hear your voice, that will communicate it to others, and that will trust and know that if we don't drift, if we don't discard the things that are important, if we don't despair, and if we don't disregard sound advice, we can be people who can move through the storm and who can bring other people with us. That's the goal. That's what we want to do. We want to be Christians. We want to be Christ followers that bring other people with us. So help us to do that today. I thank you for my mom. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for uh, my Nana and for the women that you've placed into my life on this Mother's Day. I ask that you'd bless each and every mom. Help them to have a great Mother's Day, even if they can't maybe see everyone that they normally could. God, I ask that you'd bless them, that you'd strengthen them, and that you would just fill them uh, with all the joy uh, that they can muster, God, I pray that you would strengthen them today. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.